Thank you for taking the time out for the interview. Definitely appreciate it. Oh, no problem. Thank you for having me. All right, no problem. So um, I want to start off with Black's debut album. You know, what do you remember about recording that album, and what was the creative process like for that album? Recording is um, one of my highlights was when we was recording with Dallas Austin in Miami. Um, because we got a chance to stay at Lenny Kravitz house when we were just, you know, recording the album, and it just was like, dude, we're actually going to be in Lenny's house for like two whole weeks, and we just had a ball, because it was just a thrill for us to even be there. Yeah. Um, I want to say working with Missy Elliott was fun, because it was um, me and the girls, Queen Latifah had a studio room next to ours, and we was in with Missy Elliott, and... You know, so all of us kept leaving our rooms to play pool and jumping back into the sessions. I mean, recording for us is always fun because we love our craft. We love what we do. You know, mm-hmm. otherwise we wouldn't even really be doing this. But there's so many moments of recording that I could just uh, recall that were phenomenal and fun and just very filled with life. And I think that's why our music comes out the way it does. Yeah, definitely. And um, I noticed on that album that you had a hand in not only writing your raps, but you also had a hand in writing R&B songs. And I find that kind of interesting because you're sort of like the rapper in the group. So can you just kind of take me through your creative process? Like, how does a song become a song for you? Um, when I was younger, I would always just like bang on a wall, to be honest with you. I used to create beats on a wall and just beatbox in my mouth and... Then all of a sudden, I start hearing a melody in my head, and, you know, a melody, you can't write a melody down, but you can write, you know, the actual song itself. Yeah. And so, I would write it, and then just perfect it, go to making the chorus, the bridge, and everything else, and then after that, you know, I would sing it to people, and get people around me to actually sing certain notes and certain parts, so that I can hear how it sounds even better. Yeah. And once I started doing that, it started attracting a lot of people. Like, one of the first, um, I think when I was about maybe 14 or 13, I submitted a Now Later jingle, and I won. I just didn't know how to go about doing anything else after that. But then I started, you know, being more open to letting people hear my material, and Lisa really, really loved it, and she was like, why don't you write for TLC? And so then, at that point, I was like, okay, <laughs> and... I would just be in the studio with her a lot, and then all of a sudden, you know, she was like, well, we can also go in with producers, and you can get your ideas out, and you can use them for your group, and I was like, cool, and so from there, it just, I became like more so the the official writer of the group, more so like the one that just said, I got an idea or a hot concept, and we should try it, and then Tommy Matola would always say, I want her to write more for the project, and I ended up doing it. Yeah. And um, I know you worked very closely with Left Left Eye earlier in your career, so, you know, was the uh, creative process there, you know, working with her, was it more like a hands-on experience where she would help you step-by-step step with what you were doing, or was it more so just the vibe that she gave off? You know what, Lisa, just let me be me, <laughs> you know? She was so in awe of, of, I guess, talent at an early age that she just would let me do me because I think that she wanted to see what is going to come from me without her help. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's almost like, let me sit back and see what she's going to do with this. Yeah. Oh, okay, I like where you're going with that. And I was like, you do? <laughs> <laughs> and so she built my confidence, you know? She, she really inspired me through just believing in me. And sometimes that's all you, you need to give a person. The second album, Blackout, which, you know, unfortunately didn't get a proper release, but I feel like that was Black's, in my opinion, one of Black's best albums. So, um, can you just talk to, can you just talk to me a little bit about the growth on that album and what kind of process you guys had uh, had on that one? On the Blackout album, um, it was interesting because, you know, this is a second album and the label realizes our potential at that point and they just wanted us to go higher and higher and higher. The problem was trying to figure out what producers we wanted to work with as far as being the executive producer. We even sat down with uh, Jermaine Dupree and we were going to make him executive producer. Then we sat down with, you know, Tone and Pope from Trackmasters and we were going to make them. We decided to stick with family and we went with Trackmasters, but we kind of wasn't much. We wasn't kind of like 
going the right direction we want it to go. So we just started to saying, okay, we want to use different people. Like one of the people that we used was Sturkin and Rogers, who did some stuff for Prince for um, Instinct. I mean, and so those type of people were the type of people that we thought might kind of, you know, bring something different out of black. And um, another person that, that we worked with that I really liked was, um, what is the name of that group? You remember the, uh, what's, oh, it's the um, group that, they were on the movie House Friday. Um. What is the name? And he was like, I'm gonna, they had that weird, it was three guys, but they were fun to work with. I can't remember their names, but they were very fun to work with because they have created so many different records for so many different people. It was just like, but they knew how to, they knew how to bring out, if this group is not TLC, what would we do if they remind us of TLC? You know what I mean? Yeah. And they kind of gave us that flavor that we needed. Yeah. Well, Full Force, that's the name of the group. Okay. Yeah, so they were, they were really, really fun to work with. They would do pranks in the studio and stuff like that. Yeah, that album, I think, is probably my favorite, too, as well. Yeah, and another... I Another pr producer that I spoke with, who worked with you guys, is Salam Remy. Um, so I think that was pretty cool. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I loved working with Salam. He has the most dopest ideas. A lot of people don't realize that Salam Remy is the reason why the Fuji's got the score album. Yeah. Um, and you know, unfortunately, the album didn't get a chance to come out properly. So, what do you feel like people missed out on the most with that album? I think they missed out the most of being able to identify who Black Billy is at that point. Yeah. I think the first album was a good introduction. Okay, they're different, they're young, they're vibrant, they're cute. But I think the second album was like, okay, this has something on it that everybody can love. You know what I mean? Yeah. The album kind of branched out a little bit more than the first one did and reached out to many more different types of people. Mm, definitely. I mean, you know, because one song might remind you of a Timbaland and, and a Leah type record. The other one might remind you of, you know, a TLC record. The other one might remind you, but it, it just gave you so many different feels. Another one might give you the soulful feel of, you know, the kind of records that you miss with, you know, a Drew Hill or something, you know? Like, it gave you so many different directions, and I loved um, one of the ones that Full Force had did with us which is called MTV, yeah. and I loved that one because the message in it, it was just, it was a big record, but we dropped the ball on that record, and when we did that, it was simply because they, we were making changes, um, I, me and Corrupt from the Dog Town, I was expecting a child at the point, and so at that point, the label did not want to replace me, they, was, they felt like if Natina's not going to be in the group, we're not going to do the group, so... I had to keep certain things in mind, and I, of course I was going to continue on and have my child. I wasn't going to give that up for nothing in the world. Yeah. So that's, that's pretty much what happened during that time, so that, you know, it was confusing to the fans, but it was a little bit more personal than people thought it was. And then following with that album, you guys came out with Torch, so can you just kind of take me through the mindset of recording that album, knowing that the previous album that you guys did didn't come out? When we went over to Electra, Electra was our new home. Yeah. We had um, a bidding work going on with Virgin Records and with um, Electra. And at that time, Sylvia Rome was like, look, I will put up more and give you guys more things than Virgin will. So we went with, you know, what seemed to be a better offer. However, I think that during the third album, we had some really amazing people that we worked with I just don't know if the songs, in my opinion, were, because that's, I kind of felt from the writing standpoint at that point in time, and just wanted to trust Missy Elliott and where she would go. Wanted to trust certain people in, in their ideas. And some people are great artists for certain artists, but some people, you know, not so well for us because we are a different group. And I just, I felt like that was a great album, or could have been a great album. But in my opinion, I, did, I wasn't sure if I liked the direction we were going in, to be honest. Yeah. 
because I felt like that's not the book. Black is not, you know, black is a little bit different from the direction that was going, you know, was taking place with that record. I feel like after the Blackout album, it should have been taken to a whole other higher level than that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I kind of didn't like the direction of the Torch album and where it was going. A lot of people have some of their songs off of the Torch album that they really like, but for me as an artist, I have to be comfortable with what I put out first, just so I know my fans will be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, that's interesting that you mentioned that because um, I spoke with Brandy not too long ago and she said the same thing that she felt like with the Torch album you guys didn't really have, I guess, the creative control that you guys may have wanted on that album. But um, mm -hmm. was, there, was there ever a point during the whole recording process where you guys um, kind of spoke with the label and, you know, asked to really record your own stuff, or did you guys just follow what they wanted you guys to do for the most part? Well, you know what, um, at that point, you know, when Sylvia Rome is a, is a very, 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 very big businesswoman. Yeah. And when you're dealing with someone like her, and you, you want, if that's your CEO, which is your boss, you want to trust the guidance that they're giving you, you know what I mean? You want to kind of say, okay, well, if you think that this person should do five records on us and you're paying for it, then fine. This person could do five records for us. But when we got in there, we're thinking, okay, it's Missy Elliott, so it's going to be a great record. But some of those records, I just felt like, could have been a little bit more tailored for black and not one of those records where it's like, ooh, I'm getting five Missy Elliott records. No, I want tailor-made records simply for black. Yeah. And so at that point... You know, we was just trying to trust the guidance of our label, and they put us in with some amazing people. It's just those people just, in my opinion, didn't tell them make the records for black enough. Yeah. And, you know, unfortunately, Torch didn't get a chance to come out, so um, I think a lot of fans are still wondering if they're ever going to get a chance to hear that album, or, you know, are there legal issues prevented the album from coming out? Um... No, not really, because we own the masters to it. Okay. But like I said before, we just rather be more comfortable in our own skin with what we give our audience. Mm -hmm. And so if it's not necessary to give them a record that we don't even too much care for, <laughs> so why give it to them? Just so they can say they heard a black record? No, we want you to say we are the black record and we loved it. Yeah. And there's a difference, you know what I mean? Yeah. Cool. Huge difference. Yeah, definitely. And um, after the Torch album, I know Black went on a little hiatus, um, but you guys returned a few years later to record pr uh, Private Show, but that reunion didn't really last too long, so why didn't that whole thing work out for you guys? Um, personally, we all was in different phases of our lives. Um, Shamari had just got married to Rami DeVoe. Um, Brandy was in the process of getting ready to get married. And me, I was very serious about, you know, making sure that this record is a good one. And I guess when you personally need that time, when you just now really get married, some people need personal time, and that's what it was for us. We had so many different, you know, areas in our lives that was personally affecting us that we needed to take a hiatus, and everybody needed to just handle their personal lives and personal business because... What people don't realize is we've been in the music business since we were like 15 years old. Yeah. So, you know, we were babies when we first started this. And we didn't get a chance and an opportunity to really live personal lives. Yeah. And it, it wasn't, you know, directly something that we planned. It just was something that we just said, okay, look, we all need to take a hiatus for a second and breathe. And we'll come back to it. Yeah. You know? And, and that's what we're doing now. Okay, cool. So, since Black, you know, what have you been up to? Because, you know, I've heard some music from Brandy, and I've also heard some music from Shamari, but we've never really heard too much from yourself. So, can you just bring us up to date with everything that you've been doing since Black? Okay, well, <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a lot of stuff going on. I did just play um, that I was a part of. Um, I played a lead role in a play. And after that, I was working on trying to make sure whatever I did music-wise, I wanted to stick to that. You know what I mean? Because when you're coming out 
and you got Nicki Minaj out there, and you got all these different rappers out there. You don't want anyone to compare you to Nicki Minaj. Yeah. You don't want anybody to compare you to any black but yourself side of me. I wanted to show the world, and I wasn't ready to release anything or let people hear music or do all of that type of stuff yet because I felt like it was just too premature. Yeah. Are you in the process of recording anything or potentially putting out an album anytime soon? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm I'm working on this book project right now. Um, I just got an acting agent. I want to say about maybe a year and a half ago. So my my field right now is I love acting, and that's my main concern besides black. My main concern is making sure I pick the proper role and things of that nature. I'm also working very closely with a friend of mine who just got a deal with Paramount, and we're, we're, we got like 26 movies just in just now, but our budget is 50 million and up for each film. So I'm getting kind of closer to the, I want to write more scripts and things of that nature, so I'm getting kind of closer to the movie side of things right now. Okay, and is that something that you fell in love with just recently, or has it always been a dream of yours, you know, with the movies? It's always been a dream of mine. Like, what people don't know is when I was, like, little, I used to always, you know, model. And so, at that point, I started doing, like, little small shows on ABC. Um, there was one movie that I did, an ABC movie called Innocent Victims. And so, I always, I always dreamed about, you know, fulfilling that aspect of my career. But, like I said before, I got so busy to the point where we had to turn down so many films and turn down so many roles. And my main concern at that point was just making sure I fulfill my obligation to my group. Yeah. Okay, cool. Which is always important first, you know, and foremost. Yeah, definitely. And um, not too long ago, Black reunited for the Left Eye Festival. Can you kind of talk a little bit about that? And I know you mentioned it earlier, but um, if, we, if we'll see anything regarding Black in the near future? I think it was a lot of people there that was just so excited to even see all three of us together. What happened was just some match between black even that we didn't even remember was still there. And it's like we let everybody said it's like we never skipped a beat. Yeah. So I, I think that um, this time the magic that you're supposed to see in groups, that's what you're going to get from us this time. Okay. And I'm excited about it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and are you guys going to potentially record music as well, or are you guys just doing shows, or talk about that? Um, we uh, don't want to give all of that information away, but yes, yes, and yes. 